today's virtual career exploration video. I'm Danielle Britton, Talent Education Director at the Greater Binghamton Chamber of Commerce and the Greater Binghamton Education Outreach Program. I'm joined today by Brett Pennyfeather, who's the president for Eck Plastic Arts. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So we're going to jump right in. If you could start by telling me a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Pl Eck Plastic Arts. All right. So I'm a uh... Like Danielle said, Brett Penny, or Brett Penny Feather, president of Ec Plastic Arts. I've uh, became the president here when we bought the company about four years ago. Um, prior to that, I was in finance, uh, banking. I mentioned my background is actually more so risk management and managerial accounting. So it's kind of transferred well to anyways to what we're doing over here. Um, but that's how I made the transition from banking to to this. It was actually more so managerial accounting of business. Mm -hmm. Um, at Plastic Arts, we're job shops. We are a custom fabricator, a custom manufacturer of plastic parts. And we make them either by fabrication, which is just cutting them out of sheet plastic, um, injection molding, or vacuum forming. Um, so, you know, we make parts, you know, for, you know, Raymond, BAE, you know, large OEMs that basically, you know, they don't have those capabilities and we make their custom parts. Awesome. So, so you started in banking. Has that been your whole career before now? Pretty much. Yeah. And so, so what made you interested in kind of the first into banking, but then making the switch to business owner? Well, it's always more so an interest in sales. Mm -hmm. I like dealing with people and putting together deals. Um, and banking is just kind of what, you know, you graduate from school, you don't really end up doing exactly what you went to school for usually. <laughs> so, you know, I basically, I went there basically for school you know, management and uh, sales. And that's where I kind of landed up was in the finance doing that, right? It basically, as a banker, you essentially sell more, you know, money or being able to move money, mm -hmm. right, to service. Um, and basically with the whole downturn and Dodd Frank and everything else that came out, made the job a lot, just wasn't so much more about sales, it was more about analytics. And although I still enjoy that part of the job, it was, um, Ended up over here, you know, the family bought Eck Plastics. Um, I came over here, started running it, and back to just making deals. You know what I mean? That's really what it is. And it's just understanding the numbers, understanding around the business, and knowing what you can and can't do and making decisions that way. And it's actually transferred really well. And I actually just, a lot of that credit goes to the management team that was here when we bought the business because I had a very strong management team through the engineering, the controller, and um, just the general shop management. Um, awesome. That's been huge. Awesome. So what does a typical day look like for you now? Um, well, usually spend a fair amount of time on the floor, um, just hearing people, whatever issues they have, see how things are running. Um, I also spend a fair amount of time digging through the financials, um, just breaking down the data, um, learning about kind of what we have, you know, the, the costing, stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of planning. Um, you don't really do a whole lot on the day-to-day -day for the operations. It's more so about planning. So just mainly making sure people have what they want or what not they want, but what they need to do the mm -hmm. job. And then planning to see how we can do it and constantly looking to improve upon that at all times. Awesome. Um, so what sort of positions do you have at Eck Plastic Arts? So basically all the positions, I mean, so we have, you know, administrative type positions which are customer service and order entry and stuff like that. And as far as, then we have a positions like a controller. So it's more on the accounting side. And then also just controlling the flow of products, raw materials all the way through through finished products throughout here. Um, you know, and then we have production management. So that's basically, you know, the management team and engineering. Um, so I guess you break it down. There's engineering, there's manufacturing, and there's administrative. Those are like the three main sections, right? So, and then there's sales, I'm sorry, which is another huge part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I usually, I have one department head for each one of those that reports to me, and then it trickles down from there, right? So there's a couple people that are actually working in engineering. There's one person that works in sales that I have outside reps. On the shop floor, we have, I think like 20 people. And then that goes up through quality and just managing. And what do you look for when you hire people for different positions in your company? Uh, most importantly, we look at how they fit in the culture, right? I say equally as importantly. And then of course, you know, 
than the ability to fit into the vision or the jobs, this, you know, the skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to fit into the culture is a big part of it. Um, we can teach anybody to do anything except care, mm -hmm. right? So if someone comes to the job and they carry a fair amount of integrity and they, um, you know, actually care, if they're putting forth an effort, people mess up and break things and get things wrong all the time. As long as they learn from it, I mean, then there's some value there. They're just going to keep doing the same thing because that was just the easiest way to try to do it unless we have a problem, right? So we do, we look for a fit. I mean, we want everybody to get along. Truth is, it kind of like goes back to what I said before, you know, everybody goes to school for something or, you know, you know, most people don't end up doing what they thought they'd be doing when they were, you know, even 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So they're not always necessarily going to absolutely love what they're doing, but they can feel good about what they're doing. And they can also like the place they work. Mm -hmm. And we try to really provide that. And I look for people that are going to fit into that. Um, that matters. What are some things that you would recommend students do while they're still in high school um, to either kind of explore different options or kind of get some skills that are important for future their future careers? Um, I mean, so, I mean, some of it comes down to like, what would they do? I mean, it's just mm -hmm. kind of looking into the type of things that they're interested in, right? So if there's things that you find to be fun, just kind of look into whatever field there is and see how that adds value to the world. Because if it adds value, then there's going to be a position behind that, right? There's going to be a career for it. So that's kind of researching into it. Mm -hmm. And then as far as, I mean, you know, it's, you know, and if sometimes some of that's going to require college and some of it isn't, maybe just recognizing that soon you know what i mean you not everybody needs to go to school but maybe go to a trade school instead and they can actually make a really good living mm -hmm. start that a whole lot sooner um and not have all the debt you know i mean there's a lot <laughs> to go through that um internships i mean there's things like that too i mean you know we would you know there's there's times you'd be interested in bringing people in temporarily and they can start to learn things right away just kind of hands-on mm -hmm. um, just kind of get involved and just look into it you know it's, yeah yeah, so <laughs> um, do you have any additional advice for somebody either interested in like the manufacturing field or just, um, you know, careers in, in general? <laughs> the trade school, I think, is a really great tip. Um, I mean, the big thing is it's just kind of understanding like the things that, that, that really, really matter is, you know, just it's, again, it comes down to integrity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to treat others the way that you want to be treated just try to get along with everybody um i have a family myself i understand that things happen i expect people to use their vacation time i want them to i expect people to be late from time to time but then also to actually do what they can to try to make it up you know what i mean just kind of carrying that out those actually habits start in high school going to and from class and everything else too i mean you know just kind of flowing through it nonchalantly you know it doesn't really bode well when someone carries themselves that way you know mm -hmm. be fun and we can you know we, we can have fun we definitely want to have fun but at the same time we just got to make sure that we're you know it's that culture and that integrity that really makes a difference yeah yeah and it's hard to see when you're in high school how those things that you're learning even just doing your work and showing up to school on time translate to a job but <laughs> yeah no, the routine, it really, mm -hmm. it makes a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a little insight into Eck Plastic Arts and, and your career path. Um, if anybody has any additional questions for Brett or wants to learn more about Eck Plastic Arts, my contact information will be on the last slide of this video. And you can reach out to me and we can get you in touch. So thanks again, Brett. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again for having me. Yeah.